What this tells me is unequivocally that the board of directors of the Walt Disney Company are incompetent. They are totally incompetent. There should be a vote of no confidence in every member of that board. Uh, they have had a year at this point to come up with a successor. They haven't been able to do so, either because nobody at the Walt Disney Company is capable of taking this job, which is which should be deeply concerning, or nobody else outside the Walt Disney Company wants to come in to try to fix this train wreck. We have discussed this for some time. I don't think anybody on this panel was terribly surprised, but here we are at this point. Uh, we've got Bob Iger's contract has been extended through 2026, although there's a little bit more to the story than just that. Initial reactions, gentlemen, pro, you first. Iger is renewed. Where are you on this one? Well, you might as well call him the CEO infinitum. This man will never leave the company. He did not leave his office when Bob Chapek was the CEO, refused to hand over that C-suite palace, and uh, he's going to rule at the throne of Disney for as long as we can possibly imagine. As long as this man is breathing, he will be connected with Disney. He is determined to make sure that his legacy remains. He has all the money in the world. He has all the material possessions he could want. He has fame. He can go on any show he wants to go on. This man is determined to make sure that his legacy will be sustained. And right now, were he to leave the company, it would not. It's in shambles because it is he who put the company in the position it is in, not Chapek at all. And the uh, worse and worse this company is revealed to be uh, uh, positioned in, the more you realize that it could only be Iger, the man who was here since 2005 and beyond, who has uh, put this company in a uh, very precarious situation. Now, him staying, of course, is, is good for the shareholders. It's good for the board ostensibly because the idea here is that he can bring stability. And with so many of the executives already fleeing the sinking ship of the C-suite, it makes sense, I suppose, for Iger to be there if they believe that he can actually uh, bring calm to the storm and tranquility to the mouse. We'll see. And Pro, I would add to that that I think uh, this, this pretty much uh, tells us why Christine McCarthy decided to uh, head out the door a few weeks ago, and perhaps uh, uh, um, Tom Newton as well. Uh, I think Christine McCarthy has been mentioned now for the last year or more as one of the possible successors to Bob Iger to helm the CEO chair at Disney. Uh, and of course... She probably had inklings about a month, if not more ago, that Iger would be hanging around, as the talk around the town has been now for at least the last eight months. Uh, there are articles that we've pulled up during live streams from places like The Motley Fool, from Puck Magazine and Matt Bellany. Everybody has, has seemed to have been on the bandwagon that Bob Iger wasn't going anywhere. Now we just got the confirmation. Uh, but Jonas Campbell, your thoughts on this? I and think let's not forget, Valiant. Let's not mm -hmm. forget, before we go to Jonas, don't forget that Dana Walden, she was also seen as a very high-level perspective to be the CEO. Pro, you got to leave something on the bone for the what? rest of us, man. You Dana just Walden was getting into fights we had heard <laughs> behind the scenes with Alan Bergman. <laughs> Sorry, city. Lucasfilm fires everywhere. The, the, the ship is sinking. Flee. <laughs> We're going to get Sorry. to the Kathleen uh, Kennedy stuff here in work. just a bit. But no, you're right about Dana Walden. I didn't mention her in that part of the conversation only because I was I was just looking at the executives that have actually left the door uh, in the last few weeks. But Jonas, your thoughts on this one? Well, well, I, I only give Pro a hard time because he said exactly what I was going to say. This is mm -hmm. horrible news for Dana Walden and Josh Tomorrow the two remaining CEO candidates or potential CEO candidates, this is a clear indication that they are not ready to take the reins in the eyes of the board, or more appropriately, not in the eyes of Bob Iger. Well, let me add to that, Jonas, uh, to be very blunt with you and the audience, I don't think there's a single person at the Walt Disney Company that is capable of running the Walt Disney Company. 
Agreed. Uh, not Dana Walden, not Christine McCarthy, not Tom Newton, not Alan Bergman, not anybody else on down the line. If the Walt Disney Company actually decides to go with an internal replacement for Bob Iger when he leaves in 2031, we'll get to that in a minute. Explain it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll get there in a minute. Just a teaser for everybody out there. Uh, but if they actually were to try to find somebody in there, they wouldn't do it. Uh, they, they don't exist. And if they actually were to hire somebody from inside Disney, they would just be in for more problems. Um, Bob Iger, as you correctly stated, is the one that basically just blew a hole in the side of this boat some years ago, uh, none the least of which was the $70 billion uh, acquisition of Fox, which was lighting money on fire. We've seen what they've done with Fox since then, which is nothing, literally pretty much nothing at this point. Um, and of course, that has long been a lament on Wall Street and even in the entertainment industry. Um, Can I that's, comment? That's on, where we are. Yes, Jonas, On the please. Fox acquisition mm -hmm. in particular, uh, Bob Iger insisted that they overpay by $20 billion because he got into a bidding war with Brian Roberts from Comcast. Yep. Uh, Br Brian Roberts upped his bid, and then Bob Iger came in and raised his bid by $20 billion above his original bid. And now, uh, as part of the negotiations with Comcast, they agreed to pay uh, what is looking like is, is probably going to shape up to be another $20 billion for the remaining stake in Hulu. So uh, this is a this is an acquisition that could cost them. Uh, they, they could overpay by more than ten times what they paid for Marvel or for Lucasfilm. Yeah, Brian Roberts absolutely ran roughshod over Bob Iger, and, and and in retrospect, I think Brian Roberts knew exactly what he was doing, and I think he ran the price up. And when Bob Iger came out and said, Bob Iger's ego got the better of him. And I think Brian Roberts knew he could do that, stuck Disney with this turd that they wouldn't know what to do with, and then still get him on the back end with Hulu, which is coming up. Um, Bob Iger is, in my opinion, little more than a, an egomaniac. Um, and they just reinstated him through 2026 as CEO. But as I mentioned, he's really going to be there through 2031 because there's a little bit of this news today that people have completely overlooked except when you're me and you actually pull up the United States Securities and Exchange Commission filing and find some other little nuggets in there. So, gentlemen, here is the SEC. That's the United States Securities and Exchange Commission filing the Form 8K that was published today as we are recording this on Wednesday, July 12th, 2023. So there were, of course, the press releases that went out to places like Variety Magazine, which we had up on the screen Moments ago, Hollywood reported deadline. They all got the same stuff. This is the actual SEC filing, and I found this rather amusing. So, of course, one of the points brought up, apart from the actual timeline of the extension, was the 500% uh, enhancement on the incentivized portion. Uh, this is where they were talking about the bonuses going from $1 to $5 million. Again, all of that was in the public press release. We can make of that what we will. But what I found quite interesting was this next tidbit. This paragraph right here, the amendment to Mr. Robert Iger's contract also provides that the post-retirement security benefits to be provided for Mr. Iger for five years following his termination. Folks, we've talked about this before. The advisory contract that started when Bob Iger left the first time January 1st of 2022, the five-year contract uh, following his termination of employment under his current employment agreement will not be reduced for the approximately 11-month period. Such services were provided following Mr. Iger's prior retirement on December 31st of 2021. <laughs> so what this means is previously... A, pre, a prior SEC filing when Bob Iger came back in November of last year of 22 stipulated that this exact contract, this five-year advisory deal would be told, meaning the moment he came back, they hit the pause button on it. He had already served or had been paid out 11 months on that five-year advisory deal. So, ostensibly, when he were to retire again, 
At that point, at the end of 2024, which of course is now not happening, now it's 26, he was going to pick up the remainder of the four years and 11 months, or excuse me, four years and one month, four years and two months, because he came back in November 20th. They reset the clock. He gets a whole five years back again when he retires. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Iger is not leaving the Walt Disney Company until 2031. The end of 2031. Yes. <laughs> it's good to be Bob Iger. <laughs> it's, 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 well, he will be, he will be in his 80s. He yep. will be in his 80s receiving excellent compensation. And one of the things I'm interested in about this is the timing. Of course, these corporations who are backed by these massive institutions, they do these things with impeccable timing for reasons that benefit them. They can do this at any point, but they chose and elected to do this today. We know that we are are about a month away from the next big meeting for Disney, and that one could be uh, quite bad. We also know that his uh, prior uh, toe-in-hand for all of these meetings, the former chief financial officer, Christine McCarthy, she will not be there. She has essentially exited the company. And I just wonder, and Valiant Jonas, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but uh, is Iger being renewed at this time to sort of prepare the way and say that regardless of the rough season, head this is the man and he's going to be here and that's it and maybe that's to provide stability in the face of very negative outlooks that could be coming in the next quarters uh absolutely i just like to point out that one year ago the walt disney company made this same move with uh the other bob uh bob chapek yes uh, right when before, they renewed him right right before peter rice was walked out the door this could i, I mean of course this could just be for uh for the purpose of having some confidence going into this uh, this uh, shareholders meeting. But this is not the annual show, shareholders meeting, so it's just going to be like the, the big institutions, which the big institutions don't seem to have a problem with Bob Iger at this point. Uh, the big institutions are the ones that made this decision. Mm -hmm. the right, big they institutions, want him there for whatever reason. Yeah, the, the board of directors of the Walt Disney Company do not make a decision like this. No board of directors at any publicly traded company makes a decision like this in a vacuum. They are on the phone with, they are in communication with constantly, their major shareholders. Uh, the Vanguards, the State Streets, the Black Rocks, American Funds, T. Rowe Price, who go on down the list. Pull up the Morningstar list if you want to see it. Uh, it's not important, but I mean, those are the people they're on the phone with because those shareholders are going to be deeply involved in a decision of this magnitude. At the end of the day, what this tells me is unequivocally that the board of directors of the Walt Disney Company are incompetent. They are totally incompetent. There should be a vote of no confidence in every member of that board. Uh, they have had a year at this point to come up with a successor. They haven't been able to do so, either because nobody at the Walt Disney Company is capable of taking this job, which is which should be deeply concerning, or nobody else outside the Walt Disney Company wants to come in to try to fix this train wreck. And it is a train wreck at this point. They have too many problems coming up. And each and every one of these problems are 100% entirely the fault of Robert Iger. He's created this entire mess. He has put all these employees at Disney that have created the cultural uh, disintegration uh, that, that, that it is now just engrossing the Walt Disney Company. People want to blame in the media People like Bob Chapek for getting involved in Florida politics. But as we know from Ron DeSantis' own words in his own book, Chapek didn't want to get involved in that. He was forced into it by a massive political cabal at the Walt Disney Company, spearheaded by Tom Newton, and all these other people that Bob Iger put in place. It was Bob Iger that dragged Disney down the political path. It was Bob Iger that spent $70 billion on Fox. It was Bob Iger that acquired properties like Marvel, and Pixar, and Lucasfilm, which, to be fair, had a limited run of success, certainly some more than others. Marvel had 10 great years of success at the box office, but now it has fallen apart. Bob Iger ran off Ike Perlmutter, the only realistic check and balance against people like Kevin Feige and formerly of Victoria Alonso. He ran off people like John Lasseter, who kept places like Pixar and Walt Disney Animation Studios in check. We've all seen the product that have come out from those trash studios in the last four or five years, all of which have failed at the box office. 
And now look at Lucasfilm, a complete dumpster fire. And gentlemen, this gets us into the final portion of this. What impact that we're looking at right now, what impact does this renewal and extension of Robert Iger with the Walt Disney Company have on Kathleen Kennedy? And pro, I'm going to give you the first word on this because you deserve it. And I know you're not going to toot your own horn, but I will. You were the first person back in the summer of 2021 to tell everybody, as far as you were hearing, she was going to get renewed and she was going to be hanging around for another three years based on that renewal. Her contracts have always been for three years. And that she'd be hanging around through the release of Indiana Jones 5. Indiana Jones 5 then, of course, got delayed an additional year not long after that. Here we are. It's out. It's a dumpster fire. We're doing a video on your channel here shortly that'll be out today as well, folks. Go check it out. But Pro, you've been on this since day one. What impact does this have on Kathleen Kennedy? Well, the really interesting thing about this is it all comes down to what kind of Iger we are going to get in his final three years. He has three years instead of one. That also means that he cannot kick the can down the road. The Kennedy can is here, and he's going to have to decide whether he wants to can her based on the performance out of can or whether she gets to stick around uh, on and on and on. Based on that Ahsoka trailer that came out a couple of days ago, I don't see how it's possible that, that they can keep her with the studio. That looks horrendous. It's terrible. I mean, it's it's absolute trash. There's no telling how much damage that, that one trailer has done to interest in the series and Star Wars. And then you consider, well, that's probably tied into the Ray movie, and that's probably tied into the Mandoverse movie. And, you know, we, we're watching Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny become if not the greatest financial loss in cinematic history, one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and you wonder, you know, how many can they possibly take like that? How many John Carters can you do out of Lucasfilm? <laughs> We're hearing that things are moving rapidly at Lucasfilm. I cannot yet talk about uh, some of the things that we're hearing. I also don't want to get into conspiratorial stuff. And uh, that's becoming more and more difficult because, you know, there's all this chatter online and, and we want to play hard and uh, straight with the facts. Mm -hmm. We have a great track record because we've tried to do that. Sometimes that means we're a little bit slower coming out with what we, we are finding out. We also have to protect sources, but I can tell people that things are happening behind the scenes. Um, we, we can't discuss it yet, hopefully soon, but we'll see. It, it depends on what kind of Iger this is. If it's the Iger we've had for the past uh, however many months since he came back, then you know he's, he's very militoast. He's very neutral. Uh, a little on the weak side and easy to anger when his political opponents face him. But I don't know that he would have the uh, chutzpah to go after Kennedy with that mode. If he's being brought bad, back and given the mandate, you know, cut to the marrow, we'll watch out. Mm -hmm. Jonas? No, I all, all I can do is, is agree with Pro. The assumption here was that uh, if Kennedy is, if we just set this on autopilot, Kennedy is not being renewed next year, which means she exits next year, which means that she would be the next CEO's problem. At this point, she is a problem that Bob Iger has to solve. Whether or not that means he puts someone else in charge and she is just the uh, CEO emeritus and, and quietly exists in the background for whatever period of time, uh, she cannot be left in charge of the ridiculous spending at Lucasfilm. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, uh, I, I, I Pro hasn't shared with me yet, uh, whatever the scoops are, but I have, I have so many questions about what is going on over there at Lucasfilm. The only thing I think that could save uh, Kathleen Kennedy right now is a greater focus on Pete, Doc, Pete Doctor and the uh, Pixar situation, which is a completely different dumpster fire that has to be solved. I would agree That's with right. that. And, and one of the difficulties here, mm -hmm. One of the difficulties, Valiant, is Disney has to figure out how to un untie multiple knots at the same time, mm -hmm. while at the same time not indicating to shareholders that, hey, we have these huge problems because they have so many fires that have to be put out. But to put out the fires, they have to acknowledge the fires. And so they're in this really strange uh, catch-22 situation, but I, I don't see any way around them really going in. And you know, we've seen drastic, amazing cuts. And I don't mean amazing in a positive way. I mean, amazing as in, wow, I can't believe they did that with things like the archives, ESPN, mm -hmm. um, various other national geographic, 
you know, essentially just wiping it out except for a brand name. We could see that at some of these studios. It, there's no telling what could happen. Well, it's interesting. And we had this, and I was almost going to do a separate video on this until this news broke with Iger. And I don't know if you gentlemen saw this uh, this morning. It came across the financial wires that I follow. Uh, but there is talk that Disney is investigating what to do with India, yeah. the hot star. They're looking to perhaps dump it off or bring in another investor. Um, they they need to get rid of it. And I, I look, I've never been a fan. Well, they're making what thirty cents, thirty cents an account. Uh, fifty nine cents now, actually, I think is what it's down to. Oh, much better. Yeah, much yeah, better. Well, much and that's better. also, I do believe that's a collection of channels of linear channels out there as well. <laughs> Well, they, they have that separate. So they, they have linear broadcast rights there, and that's what Disney actually renewed for the IPL, for the Cricket League in India, was they they won the auction for the renewal of the broadcast rights, but they did not win the renewal for the streaming rights, which in retrospect, I'll be honest with you, I, I think it was a great move on Disney's part not to win that because that was another $3.2 or $3.3 billion dollars. That was purchased by a conglomerate headed by Paramount and a few other people. Um, so even if Disney were to dump off uh, of that that hot star at this point, uh, that whole thing to somebody else, they they would just be selling it off to pay down a three billion dollar plus dollar liability that they that they purchased for IPL. The revenue in India just isn't there. Disney was able to charge, of course, what they charge here in the U.S. or the U.S. dollar equivalent in India. Great, but you can't. All you can charge in India basically is, is one-tenth or less than one-tenth of what you're charging your U.S. customers um, because that's the way it works over there. Uh, so Right, I mean, and then you try to scale that up based on the fact that you've got a billion people living in the country. I yeah. mean, if, if if the Walt Disney Company is being threatened with questions of whether or not they're going to sell ESPN, which is a, a I wouldn't call it a pillar brand of the Disney Company, but it's at least a profitable aspect of the company, the three legs of the company right now. Mm -hmm. I see no reason why, if there's any risk to profitability in, in India, that they wouldn't either spin it off or sell it because it's one of the few things that they have right now that isn't emblazoned with the word Disney that they can get rid of. Exactly. It's still called Hot Star. And as far as ESPN goes, I know there's a lot of lament out there with analysts and, and people on Wall Street that, you know, because cable and broadcast, linear broadcast is a, a shrinking breed and the revenues are coming down because of advertising cutbacks and people are cutting the cord and all this kind of stuff. This is a legitimate hump that Disney can eventually get over. Because as soon as they can get mainline ESPN into DTC, which they really can't do right now because of deals with linear cable companies, people like Comcast, people like Charter or Spectrum or Cox Communications or name any of the other, you know, bajillion different cable companies out there, until they can renegotiate those contracts and get ESPN into straight up DTC, where Disney can charge you directly and people will fall over themselves to pay for it. Twenty, thirty dollars a month for a subscription like that. Disney could be making money hand over fist and they'd still get advertising revenue from it. Uh, they can't do that yet. Um, so but but that's why I say I don't think ESPN being spun off or excuse me, sold outright uh, is is something that's likely to happen. I think it'd be a big mistake unless Disney is trying to go to a pure studio play. Because there's still people out there that think that Disney is is going to put themselves up for sale in the next three years, and that maybe this Bob Iger extension is part of that. Even if Disney does try to pull that switch and put themselves up for sale, they are still going to have a hell of a high hurdle to jump over with the uh, the FTC yeah. and the FCC, for that matter. Uh, so if Apple or Amazon or somebody else comes along, they've made it clear before they're not interested in this. Um, they, they, I don't see how they're going to wind up putting that together. So, you know, you know, the only interesting wrinkle I would throw I, into I, that, I, that mm -hmm. the Microsoft and Activision, uh, Blizzard merger mm -hmm. right now, it seems to have gravity, uh, pulling down on it to make it happen, which I, I think we're all surprised at this point that the EU is the only regulatory body that seems to be resisting it. And if the whole <laughs> world is saying, no, it can happen. Okay. I guess this is going to happen. Be a long process. Pro? I think Disney is stuck with the ship that they're sailing on. The interesting thing about this is that people don't understand, you know, the, the severity of what Disney's facing. They may think that we're speaking 
perhaps too strongly, perhaps uh, hyperbolically. But folks, this is a company that has seen a 70% reduction in box office revenue. They have, of their own desire, for whatever reason, eliminated their secondary physical media market. That's gone. And they're losing money on the new one that's replaced it, this Disney Plus streaming system. Now we're watching as the parks are seeing uh, far smaller audiences. Merchandise is down. When you have a 70% reduction in the, the engine that drives your new content, you have a very, very serious issue at hand. And we'll have to find out, can Iger actually pull this off? He was considered one of the greatest CEOs in, uh, in entertainment. But can he be the savior against uh, his own self? Because he's the one who put them here. You know, final thought on that, Pro, I think you, you bring up something really, really sharp there, and that is the fact that Bob Iger is an entertainment CEO. He's a Hollywood CEO, and that's exactly what D Disney does not need right now. I think that's been their biggest problem. They need a good business person. They need a turnaround CEO. They need a CEO that recognizes Disney as it's still primarily, at this point, based on the operating income, based on the revenues, it's a theme park and resort company. It's a live sports broadcast company. If we go down the list of, of, of operating income and revenues. The whole theatrical and entertainment side of this is, is virtually tertiary to that. Uh, so, I mean, that's that, especially with the theatrical side of things. And I think that's part of the problem is that you cannot have a Hollywood type running the Walt Disney Company. You need, and I think this is why Universal has been at least to some degree as successful as it has been is because it's not run by the Hollywood types. It's ultimately run by a cable company. It's run by Comcast. Uh, it's there's somebody who's detached from the Hollywood side of things. I think that's one, been one of Disney's biggest singular problems. Um, so we'll see what happens. As I said, I don't think there's anybody at Disney that can, can write this ship and apparently nobody else outside of Disney uh, has wanted to come in and do this because you got to imagine if there were there were qualified candidates out there and they're all, and they are they're out there for sure. Nobody has stepped up to this plate after a year of this with the whole plan from day one of Bob Iger coming in being his job is to come in for the next two years to help find a successor. We're almost a year into this and they haven't even gotten one person up on deck. Yeah, I, that's a, I don't that's even a failure. Yeah, that's a I don't failure. think that they've even considered uh, going external yet for it for anything serious because there are two names on the top of that list and that's that the would, problem that yep. would solve this problem and i'm talking about external candidates and mm -hmm. and if we want to go there we can but but candle candle media right now has two people who would be a pretty good fit and know disney pretty well that's kevin Mayer and tom staggs and either of them would fit so perfectly in there but bob Iger's one move is buying another company and he doesn't have the funding to buy Candle Media from uh, Blackstone, not Black Rock, Blackstone, Blackstone yeah. which is uh, Ray Dalio. <laughs> they make great grills. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Yeah, Bob Iger is going to have to sit here and be saddled with the fruits of his failures at this point, and there's no getting around it. Uh, but folks, we appreciate you being here. And if you enjoyed this conversation, don't worry. There's more coming up. And it's coming up this afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Thursday, July 13th. Not here, but over on WDW Pro's channel for the live show, the Pro Show at that time. Make sure you check that one out. Make sure you check out Pro's video and Jonas J. Campbell on his channel and all of his wonderful Everything Woke series. Gentlemen, I appreciate you being here. We'll see you this afternoon at 5 p.m. We'll discuss this more in depth. Until next time, take care.